so, you know, a lot of what I hear as far as uh, women who in, are enduring abuse or have endured abuse is the children. You know, a lot of times the fear that mothers feel as far as leaving um, is the fear of being a single mother and what that's going to look like and what the time is going to look like. Um, do you mind giving us like a little bit, you know, I love, you know, you're here, you're alive. You're not in an insane asylum. Like you made it through. Yeah. Um, but you know, what, what did, what was the struggles? Like what, what can they expect? Um, to, to feel, to, to go through, I mean, obviously you had at this point four or five, you know, in and out, you know, single here, single there, you know, can you give us a little bit of, of hope as far as, yes, it's bad. And this is what a couple things that happened. However, you know, we're here and we're, we're still alive. Yeah. Um, we made it through. Can you give us some examples? Um, you have a lot of long days, you know, I mean, from sun, from the time you get up to the time you go to bed, you're, you're like this, because mm -hmm. even though I had childcare for when I was at work, when I was at home, it was just my kids and I, so juggling the schoolwork, dinner, the shopping, bathing, loving them, yeah, you know, disciplining them, just parenting them. And then not to just only have that monotony of like every day you have to get these things done, still trying to like have fun um, mm -hmm. and, you know, enjoy your children. And um, that was hard because again, reflect, and I, I, I could have probably done more with that. I tried to do as much as possible, but I was tired and yeah. then going to school too until I was 27. Um, so it was like, get up, drop the kids off, go to school, go to work, pick the kids up, make dinner, get into bed, you know, doing that all alone. Yeah. That, it was hard, you know, but one thing that I, I, I do have some friends that are single, um, and single parenting right now, younger children. And I don't think I was very good at it doing back then, but I always talked in general, when I talk about women or single parenting or just parenting, regards to we have a partner, because you know, currently my partner and I work off opposite shifts. So when he's here, he's here alone. When I'm here, I'm here alone. So it's you know, I have to give myself some grace that yeah, you know, I I know I accomplished as much as I could throughout the day. I know I did, and sometimes the dishes don't get done. Sometimes there's still toys that house looks like a tornado toy, you know, toys of tornado everywhere. Um, sometimes they don't get a bath every day, which is, you know, it's like, you know, sometimes things just don't happen because you're so busy and you have to lay down because you're tired. And so learning, you know, that that's okay. Yeah. You know, but it, it, you're, you're, you're busy constantly. Mm -hmm. And, and then sometimes you're, you, you, you miss a relationship. You know, you're lonely, even though I, you have your children around you, you, you know, I remember having those like lonely moments where you want a partner, you want a hug from a partner, not, you know, of course your children are great, but you want that connection with somebody. And when you go years without it, you kind of get used to it and time goes by. But, um, you know, I remember being lonely at times, too, and I would sit there wherever I was at the park or restaurants and you see families and yeah. they look happy. But it's just like, wow, it le you know, they're together and they have their kids and yeah. gosh, that must be so nice and, and missing yeah. that. Um, you know, th those were some hard things that I remember really wanting back then. And, you know, at the time I didn't have them even though the ones I did have weren't healthy, <laughs> you know, it's like, you still miss that. Um, did you have a, a thought? Wh what was your mentality as far as men? Were, were you kind of like, there's no good ones left or were you like, they're out there. I just got to find them. Where, where were you mentally on that? I think I, 
in general, I'm kind of like, I don't want to, I don't know if like, um, like optimist is, you know, the word, but, or romantic, you know, a romantic or whatnot. Um, I always had hope, you know, that I would find somebody that, you know, I, I would have that relationship. And I knew there was good men out there. I mean, I worked with great men that, you know, had wives and kids and, um, you know, I, I had a couple girlfriends, you know, that are still with their their partner after 16, 17 years. So it's like I had some examples of hope, you know, that that it could I happen. Um, yeah. But, you know, like after I had five kids, um, you know, my partner used to tell me no one's going to want you with five kids. No one's wow. going to want you, you know, and that was just him being nasty and mean and things like that. But, you know, he would tell me that no one's going to want you. And, and for, you know, and it's, you believe a little bit of it too, because people hear you have five kids and they're like, oh my God, you know, it's, it's a little overwhelming for them, even though it's my norm. And so, yeah. um, you know, so I, yeah, I definitely, I had hope. Um, I wasn't expecting it when I met my, my husband, you know, the way that it all transitioned, but um so yeah, there's hope out there. There's I always say there's someone out there for everybody, regardless of your circumstance. There's somebody yeah. out there that's gonna love you for you, you know. Even though I had five, I came with five kids. I came with a lot of experience and you know heartache and struggles and things like that. So one hundred percent. So speaking speaking of now that we're on the trajectory of this, um, you know, how did you meet your husband? Tell us the love story. Um, it, we, we met at work. He's in the department as well. Um, and, um, we had known each, we've been together six years now and we knew each other prior to that. You know, we worked in the same, um, kind of upstairs and downstairs from each other. He had a part, he had a partner. I had a partner. Um, but we would talk a lot and, and it's funny because I remember we would have conversations and I would, and I was with someone who cheated who was abusive and and he would tell me things that he's doing in his relationship and I would say to myself gosh she's so lucky that he's willing to do certain things in their relationship because of how she what she desired at that time um just you know personal things in their relationship but I had never known a man to make those sacrifices and I would just think to myself like wow she's so lucky you know that that and he's good looking too <laughs> um and then it just kind of happened you know he broke up with her my partner passed away and about yeah. a year later we ended up working in the same building um but different shifts and a couple times he was like oh can you get me some food i'm working overtime and it just kind of started and um and 10 months later we were married <laughs> really yeah. yeah who made the first move like what was the first like let's go out to dinner um well i don't know. i guess he did you know okay. i guess he did it was it wasn't even kind of like that you know he was going through some stuff and um i had an extra room and i had told him like oh you can rent a room from me you know and i and i wasn't thinking like I want a relationship with it. It wasn't that at all. Um, and so he he did start staying in, you know, renting a room from me. Um, that separation or non-relationship didn't last long because we had attractions toward each other, but that wasn't even a thought when when he came in and started staying with me. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, so, but it was about two months after that, then it was like, okay, there's some, you know, some things happening here. Um, but it was from that point forward to 10 months later, we were married, even though wow. it, it wasn't like, well, hey, we should go out, let's hang out, let's go out on a date. Um, so, but, you know, I guess we knew, you know, I mean, I knew at that point, like I, because we did have about a month where we were questioning things. And I said, you know, I know what I, you know, if, if we're going to do this, I want a partner, you know, I don't want to just like kind of hang out and see somebody. I just don't have time for that. So, you know, if that's what we're going to do, then, you know, then we can like be exclusive or whatnot. Um, so that 
I was pretty strict about, you know, or stern, you know, I knew I, I just didn't want to like waste time with, yeah. I don't know, dating. Um, I wasn't in that place, I guess. I don't know. So, um, and we, ha we clicked a lot, you know, we, I laughed with him. I hadn't laughed with somebody in a long time and we laughed wow. and, and he accepted me, you know, he didn't, it, it wasn't like, oh gosh, you have five kids. I'm not sure. You know, there was an automatic acceptance for, you know, who I was. Mm -hmm. Um, and, and so we just did it. We, <laughs> we got wow. married because yeah, and then we had like the, a specific date we want. We got married on a Wednesday, you know, we didn't have like a big wedding. Um, but, you know, with as, as fast as that, you know, he's the best relationship I've had. I'm, you know, in the best place I've been in when it comes to relationships or my life and how I provide for my children. And, um, you know, but I'm pretty, like I tell him, you know, I married you for a partner for me, you know, because for 20 years, I, you know, I, I had my house, I took care of my kids. That's, I didn't marry you to have a bigger house Got or it. a better car. It, Got you it. know, I, 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 I needed and I want a partner. Um, mm -hmm. So I always, whoever's going to get married, you know, have conversations about your expectations in yep. the marriage. <laughs> Not afterwards. <laughs> yeah, totally. You know, that's hard for us to do sometimes. Yeah, yeah. that's hard. Because you sometimes. then you decide like, are you willing to accept some things or not? And yep. you know, sometimes it's like, well, maybe if we would have had this conversation, maybe we we, we would have waited a little longer. If yep. you knew exactly what I I needed, but you know, there was some, um, you know, fairy tale in it even though, you know, I was, you know, in my mid thirties, um, there was, was still some fairy tale in it in terms of, oh, you know, we're getting married and, oh, I'm engaged. And, you know, then we got married and a year later we bought a house and, you know, wow. then now we have a two and a one-year-old together. Um, so, but it's How cool. long have you guys you know, been it's, together? It's, it's six years. Okay, We've been together cool. six years. Yeah, I'm 42 now, um, and my youngest two children are two and one, um, and that's a lot different from being 20 with two kids. <laughs> I'm like really tired now. I wasn't. I was tired back then, but like you're really tired at 40 working and having small children. You know, that's why I told him like if I go to sleep and the house is dirty, know that I was okay with it. So you got to be okay with it too, because like. You know, yeah, I'm tired. Yeah. Um, but it's cool. It, you know, it's it's fun, and I'm thankful that I do have I do have my 15 and my 11 year old, so they're helping right now while I'm doing yeah. this, and so that's really great because I can only imagine what you know what I went through at 20, being in the house alone with two. I remember when I had my my three children. I had six, three, and a newborn. And I was standing on my front lawn, just like falling to my mom because I was, uh, I, I know I had postpartum, I'm sure. Cause I was just so overwhelmed with yeah. like what was going on. Um, yeah. And so, you know, it's, you learn, which I'm, you know, I'm, I'm thankful for, um, what was my word, you know, for learning my lessons and growing you know, and things like that. I'm, I'm thankful for that because, um, you know, I'm in a different place now as the parent that I am. So, yeah. yeah. <laughs> 100%. I love that story. That's such a gorgeous story. And I love hearing it because there's so many men and women who just, they've been in and out of so much turmoil and sometimes they give up, you know, sometimes they give up, they turn to alcohol, they turn to drugs, they turn to suicide. And, um, you know, they just feel like they've been hit so many times. Um, yeah. Not necessarily even an abusive relationship, but just hit like, with just so much stuff, just so many things yeah. just coming at them. And your story is such a story of resilience. Like, you know, baby after baby and then 
you know, relationship after relationship that were, that was just not good, toxic. No. And you're still standing there. You know, you got a baby on the hip. You got one holding hands. You got a couple following you like a little uh, mother hen. And, uh, <laughs> and you still have hope. You still have yeah. hope that there's someone out there. And um, what a, an amazing, amazing way to really show, to really show, not just tell, but like show that uh, that there's hope and that it can be done. You just have to keep, keep going. Yeah. You just have to keep going. Yeah. I didn't, you know, I didn't have a choice. You know, at 18, my mom was like, okay, you can't live here. She had my sister who wasn't doing well. And my sister had a baby. She had my brother who was 12, 13 years old, not in a good place. Wow. And so it was like, you know, if you're going to have this baby, then you can't live here. And again, at that time it was hard, but it just, you know, it just pushed me to a place of like, I got to do this. And then, you know, I could have not uh, putting anybody down who, you know, maybe just feels like they don't have the options or the resources to go oh. out there. But one thing that, you know, um, because I, what I hope to do in the future is, you know, work with other single mothers, but there's, there are resources out there. You know, yeah. I got my AA for free because of mm -hmm. the financial aid, the book money, the free childcare, the welfare at the time, you know, like I got paid to get my AA. Um, yeah. And so there's resources out there that, that can help you you just have to, you know, I always give the example, you know, they weren't coming and knocking on my door. I had to go out there, do the footwork, stand in the financial aid line for two hours. But, you know, I mean, I, I just didn't have another choice. And I knew I wanted, you know, I, I had a goal to get someplace. Um, and so, you, you know, you have to keep on going, you know, at least for me, I didn't know any other way. Um, that, you know, that's just the road that, that I chose. And so um, I did recently, when I had my two younger ones, I stayed home for eight months and then I stayed home for 13 months. That was the best time. You know, I wish I could have done that with all my children. So for a mother that gets to stay home and raise her kids, that's work. Yeah. You know, I, I remember telling my mom last year, I'm like, staying home is busy. You know, you're yeah. busy. And um, I would I would have loved to do that with my children. Um, I just didn't have that choice. Yeah. You know, I had to be the one to get out there and work and, and, you know, educate myself and things like that. So for mothers that get to stay home, you know, I always encourage them, you know, that's fantastic. Stay home. But when you have that downtime, you know, find things that you like and see if you can monotonize on them. See if you can, you know, provide a service or, you know, a group or something to other women, um, because there's women out there going through things that you're going through mm -hmm. as well. You know, there's there's women that will absolutely connect and understand your struggle at that time. Um, so, you know, I don't I don't uh, any woman who gets to stay home with their kids. That's that's a blessing. And I think yeah. that's a great thing. And it's hard. It's hard because yeah. I think even more pressure is a little added on you because like, oh, you stay home. You don't work. You just, you know, take care of kids. <laughs> And it's like, you know, it's hard. It's a lot of work as well. Because then you're like, oh, I got to clean the house, have to cook and things like that. Whereas with work, it's like, I worked all day. Like dishes can wait till tomorrow. Laundry can wait till the weekend or, you yeah. know, so. Yeah, it's learning yeah. to find grace, you know, find grace on yourself, you know, and allowing yourself to breathe and not feeling like you have to be picture perfect all the time, you know, with all of the things. It is chaotic. Yeah or when you're a single mom sometimes and you have to be not only okay with it, but like sit in it confidently. That's just part of yeah. it. Yeah. I told my friend just the other day, I said, you know, give yourself some grace because she has a baby at home and, you know, and some of the things that she tells me, I'm like, it's okay. Give yourself some grace. You're doing yeah. good. The bottles yeah. can wait. Yeah. <laughs> Stick them in the dishwasher. You don't need to scrub yeah. them every time, you know? Yeah. But give yourself some grace because you're busy from the time you get up to the time you go to bed. 100%. So, you know, sometimes it's just relearning some things, um, you know, when you're used to doing things a certain way and now you have, you know, some other little people to take care of. It's just relearning 
you know, to juggle those things and becoming okay with certain things not getting done, or like you said, not being picture perfect. Because I wasn't by far. Yeah. So yeah, none of us, none of us. 